we'll go to File and Storage Services again, and Volumes, and to this particular volume. Now when we right click on it, we'll see that we have Configured Data Deduplication, which wasn't there beforehand. So clicking on that brings up the deduplication settings wizard. So we have to explicitly enable data deduplication. By default, uh, it deduplicates files that are older uh, than five days. So in other words, if you have an active file, it will not deduplicate it. You can adjust these settings, obviously, but it's a good thing uh, to just try the default for starters. Now, because deduplication is not designed for everything, you may want to exclude some particular types of files or folders from deduplication. In this particular case, this server is also a Hyper-V server and has VHDs on it. Now these VHDs are in a folder called VMs, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude selected folders. So I'm going to choose Add, expand on the volume in question, choose VMs, and select that folder. So now what I've done is I've had deduplication not try to dedupe live VMs that either are running or will be running on a regular basis on this server. You can also set the deduplication schedule by default Wait for, we're waiting for it to load here for a second. By default, it will enable background optimization. In other words, it will always run in the background, but it will run it at a low priority, and it will pause it when the system is busy, so it does not impact what is, after all, the server's primary job, which is serving up data to, to its customers. If you want to, you can adjust throughput op optimization. In other words, it will run data dedupe at a higher priority, in other words, normal priority, that above low priority, uh, several days a week, however you want to adjust the schedule. And you can even do it twice if you want to. Uh, just for the sake of this example, we won't do anything. We'll just choose OK and leave it the way it is. And we're going to leave the file extensions alone and we'll say OK. It's saving that information and we're all set. So now deduplication will run in the background and we'll see what kind of savings we get out of this when, uh, when we're finished. It will take uh, a day or two because it runs at lower priority. So we'll come back and revisit this and we'll see how it's done and how long it took to get it done on a volume of almost two terabytes. Welcome back. It's been about 48 hours or so. And if we take a look at our D volume again, you'll see that what we now have after having deduplication run for about 48 hours is a deduplication rate of 23%, uh, or 23% savings over the original undeduplicated volume, resulting in a savings of 363 gigabytes. So that's good. That's not, uh, not as dramatic as Microsoft likes to point out, for, for example, its VHD libraries and other best case circumstances, but it's still 363 gigabytes that you got back, not having to have done anything yourself to claim that space. The data on this file that got deduplicated, it is uh, essentially a, a large software share and uh, music, uh, music files of mine, which are already pretty highly compressed and not too, um, doesn't contain too much duplicate data. So all in all, I mean, that's pretty good for real life uh, duplication savings, at least uh, in my particular environment. So uh, there you have it, setting and forgetting disk deduplication in Windows Server 2012.
Welcome back. It's been about 48 hours or so. And if we take a look at our D volume again, you'll see that what we now have after having deduplication run for about 48 hours is a deduplication rate of 23%. Uh, 23% savings over the original undeduplicated volume, resulting in a savings of 363 gigabytes. So that's good. That's not uh, not as dramatic as Microsoft likes to point out for, for example, its VHD libraries and other best case circumstances, but it's still 363 gigabytes that you got back, not having to have done anything yourself to claim that space. The data on this volume that got deduplicated, it is uh, essentially a, a large software share and a music, uh, music files of mine, which are already pretty highly compressed and not too, um, doesn't contain too much duplicate data. So all in all, I mean, that's pretty good for real life uh, duplication savings, at least uh, in my particular environment. So uh, there you have it, setting and forgetting disk deduplication in Windows Server 2012.